tried to start this like over 10 times and I just keep um, playing with my hair and restarting and uh, maybe I should just do it and I'm not stopping the recording this time um, <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep going oh uh, <laughs> hi my name is Claire um, welcome back Welcome, or welcome back, to the ProWise Knitting Podcast, um, which is where I talk about my knitting, and sometimes my sewing, sometimes my cat is here, and mostly it's fun. <laughs> I've been very scatterbrained lately, um, and I think that's why I'm having so much trouble doing this, and why... I'm being a little bit um, <laughs> obsessive about my hair. Okay, let's. Sometimes that helps. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I think it's just like a reflection of what my brain is like right now. Um, I haven't been able to film in a while. It kind of it feels like it should be easier to sit down and do this than it is, but it takes a bit of a chunk of the day and you have to like not be working on three papers at once and whatever. Anyways, I was busy with school. I went out of town. Um, I don't know. I feel like for having taken a month break, I thought there'd be like more stuff to show you. But I have lots of nice stuff to show you, but it's mostly stuff you've seen before, but that's okay. Um, if you've watched before, maybe you've never watched before. I don't know. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling. I haven't spoken to anyone else. Oh, that's not true. I just spoke to my sister on the phone. She has COVID. It's very sad. She's quite sick. So, sorry, Mary. I hope you're okay. <laughs> um, but she's the only, a very sick and sad person. What? Is the only person I've spoken to today. My hair's wet because I sprayed it because I'm just being a little bit difficult with myself today. And part of that is probably because I'm getting ready to move. Um, what is today? It's May 4th. I just booked movers. I'm moving on the 21st. Um, so probably also this will be, there might be a month until I record again. Um, and this will be the last one from this room. My little, I never know what to call this room. My I call it my office, but <laughs> that makes it sound like I do um, <laughs> work here. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen previous episodes, um, I am currently in grad school, don't have a job. Um, I'm going, I'm doing a my second master's degree. Um, this one is in translation studies, so I'm working on becoming a French to English translator. So like written translation, not live interpretation. Um, yeah, anyways, how did we get here? <sighs> Maybe I'll tell you first about what I'm wearing. Um, 
I am wearing this bra that crosses in the back that drives me crazy and I shouldn't have worn it, but uh, this is my Udo pullover. Um, I made this, I started in January of 2021, so just over a year ago. Um, it's a pattern by Orlan Souk um, of Ted Besh Knitwear, I think is uh, their designer name. Um, and I really like this sweater. It's knit out of custom woolen mills. I wrote it down. Uh, custom woolen mills, mule spinner, one ply. And custom woolen mills is a mill in Alberta, I believe. Um, yeah, so I was wanting to try some Canadian yarn when I bought this. And I really like it. It is a single as the name would indicate, a single ply. Um, it's a really, a really nice yarn. I will say that I haven't, I lo like I love this pattern. I love the yoke. It was really fun to knit. I think it was really my first, yeah, it must've been my first Colorwork sweater. It was just a year ago. Um, I'd probably done like mittens in the past, but I'd never, sorry, <laughs> I'd never done a colorwork sweater. Um, mm, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I haven't worn it a ton. I think it's the short sleeves. I really like how the short sleeves look, um, but I don't know, it's hard because it's quite a warm wool. It feels like a confusing garment to wear um and so I think it doesn't get chosen that often and also I don't have like a great selection of things to wear it with I'm wearing it right now I'll show you um <laughs> my spin I'm wearing it over a dress I've never worn it like this before but I like it I will say, let's just put it on. It looks like there's a stain in the middle here. Um, but it's, I think it's just like really unluckily like a, a dark spot in the wool that like pull, pulled right in the middle, like right in the place where you would have a stain. <laughs> Were you to have a stain? <laughs> Which is very funny, but I think it shows up more on camera than in person, but um yeah, this is one of my favorite dresses. This is a nice outfit, but again, I'm like, in what weather would I wear this? Anyways, I think that's why I haven't worn it a ton, but uh, I have thought about uh, picking back up the sleeves and knitting them longer. Um, but even then, it's quite cropped. I don't know. I really love it either way, even if I don't wear it that much. Um, what else can I say about it? I definitely feel like I'd like to knit another one someday. Maybe with long sleeves. Um, yeah, what's going on here? I Oh, it doesn't look like a stain. I think it's just, just bad luck. <laughs> oh well. Um, sorry, my loud chair. Yeah, so that's that. I don't think I had anything else. I think I really didn't make a single modification to this, as far as I can remember. I even knit like the exact length called for, um, so it is quite cropped, but I like it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I think I said, I don't have a ton of things to talk about, but when I'm like looking at them here in front of me, they're all really nice. So that's, that's good. Um, the only finished thing I have is, I guess a half finished thing, is a sock. Um, I wonder if it would be nicer to show you on a blocker, but who cares? Uh, yeah, I made a sock between this time and last time. And it's knit in some uh, wool that I was so excited to get. Um, 
It's Knit in Woolly Mammoth Fiber Co. Natural Sock. Um, and I really wanted to get some Woolly Mammoth yarn for a long time. And uh, every time Emma has a shop update, I am there like right on time and then don't let myself buy anything. And it is quite... Um, yeah, it's not uh, the cheapest thing I've ever bought, of course, but um, it's really beautiful and it was really fun to knit with. So this is, again, the natural sock, um, and I think, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the colorway was called Cranog. That's probably not how you say it, but... Um, yeah, it's so pretty. It's like this cool gray with bits of purple and green. And it's just really pretty. And the the pattern that I chose, um, it was hard to pick what I wanted to knit with such a special yarn. Um, and what I chose was this pattern called Rookie um, by Yucca. Um, and they have a bunch of really nice sock patterns. Um, and I have had this pattern for ages, and <laughs> I don't know why I did this, but um, I've had it for a really long time and have never knit it. Um, so I was excited to finally do it. It's a toe-up sock pattern. I have never made a toe-up sock before. This is my first, my first toe-up sock. And one thing I really like about the pattern is, um, well, I mean, it, there are a bunch of things I like. I like the waffly texture. I like how shallow the toe is. I don't know if you can really tell, but you can kind of tell more on a foot, but it's the, the pattern starts quite early in um, into the sock as compared to some other wedge toes. Um, it has kind of a steeper increase rate and I liked that and I feel like it fits my foot well. Um, it has these really nice they're a faux cable on the side, um, so it's like nice and flat, um, and there's no like cable bump in them, um, which is good for a sock. Uh, and then it goes into this twisted broken rib um, in the cuff. And I did a Ive Partridge heel, is that what it's called? I'm just like completely blanking. Um, which I always feel like I never do correctly. I have partridge. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Anyways, yeah, really pretty. Um, it was really fun to work on, and like I've heard people recommend, I added about, I think, a half inch to the foot um, to account for... Uh, any felting that might happen in the bottom of the foot um, because there's no nylon in this and it's not super wash um, so when I put it on my foot uh, it is a little big right now but I guess with time uh, it will felt down and yeah so I've started the second one um, oops, oops, oops. I have quite a bit of yarn left. I wish I could have shown it to you in the skein because it was really pretty, but um, I actually cast these on the day the yarn arrived <laughs> um, because I couldn't, I was just too excited and I knew I wanted a pair of socks. So I think I'd said my next, like, like I was like, my next sock is going to be in the that other Garthener that I have, but um, no, it was this. So this is how far I am. I've actually made a lot of progress on the second sock. Um, so basically just the leg to go and the cuff. Um, and it's not a particularly tall leg, so <laughs> almost there. Uh, uh, I'm always like Whenever I knit socks, one is always smaller than the other. <laughs> um, so I'm always like holding them up to each other, trying to see if 
if one is knit more tightly than the other one, but I think that they're pretty spot on. <laughs> um, yeah, and I just blocked, I, this one's blocked. Um, but I just laid it flat. I didn't use my sock blockers. And especially with these uh, natural socks or nylon free socks. Um, they're too big. When I add that extra half inch, they become too big for my blocker. So it doesn't really... Anyways, and I don't know how I feel about the actual usefulness of sock blockers anyways. Um, but yeah, I really like the yarn. I guess I can show you now that I... This is not the only yarn that I bought um, from her. I also got... Uh, mm, my favorite color. <laughs> um, I got three more skeins of the natural sock in this beautiful color. I don't know why I'm... And the color is called Daffodil, which is so nice. The daffodils are out right now. There's really some, we're just like right down the street, right there, um, that are like almost this color. Um, yeah, so what I, I will say that I can be quite impulsive and have poor, poor, I have poor impulse control. <laughs> um, and the shop update was definitely on a day that I was having a bad, a bad day. Um, and probably shouldn't have spent this much money on yarn. Um, but you know, sometimes it happens. I really would like for it to happen less. But I'm glad that I have this. Um, so yeah, I bought this on a, on a hard day. <laughs> uh, and I don't know what I'm going to make with it. <laughs> because I don't know what I thought I could... I think that I thought I could make... You know what I thought I could make was... Um, Laura of Penrose Knits has this really nice pattern coming out called the Chantilly and I thought that I could make that maybe. I didn't know quite what yarn it called for um, and I like looked it up quickly and I think this wouldn't be appropriate for it and it also wouldn't be enough. Um, so I had looked quickly and I was like yeah this will be fine. <laughs> um, they're really pretty. They're just nice to hold. Um, so, I mean, I think they would be lovely in a shawl, but I don't know that um, I would actually wear a shawl in this color or ever. Um, but yeah, I don't have any shawls. Um, I'm working on that half and half triangles wrap, but um, that has more of a scarf feel to me. Anyways. Um, the one pattern I do kind of have in mind is also by Orlan Souk, um, and it's called the Peric, I think, Peric, P-E-R-E-C. I'll put a picture of it. Whenever I say I'm going to put a picture of it, I'm always cursing myself <laughs> later because then I actually have to do the work of putting the picture in and I'm not, like, great at editing. Um, but yeah, I think that that could be nice. I just wonder if maybe this yarn is a bit fine for it. It does call for fingering and this is fingering, but um, anyways, I should just do a swatch, but yeah, I think I would have enough to do like a slip over, especially if I paired it with like a mohair or something. Um, but I kind of, the yarn is so nice that I don't really want to pair it with something else. I don't know if that's annoying of me to, I don't know, not annoying, but you know, I, I, I feel like maybe it's like a little rule I've made in my head that doesn't actually need to be followed. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, so daffodil. I have been really obsessed with daffodils recently. 
Um, I've been watching <laughs> Monty Don's Gardener's World. Um, I've been a Monty Don fan for a really long time, but it's like hard to find where to watch it in Canada. Um, yeah, so I've been watching Gardener's World and then going back and I have watched some Big Dream Small Spaces before another Monty Don show, which I don't think is running anymore. Um, but I'm going back and watching some of that that I don't think I've seen before. Um, probably partly because of spring, thinking about gardening. I'm definitely not like a good gardener. I do have all these plants. <laughs> Where are they? Um, I would say I'm like mediocre with plants, but I mean, maybe a little more than mediocre. I'm capable with house plants, but I'm not great with outdoor plants. I'm just looking at my balcony, which is usually where the the outdoor plants would go. But I'm moving, um, so I'm trying to think what I'm going to do for outdoor plants this year. Um, usually, I get over ambitious with outdoor plants, and then something goes wrong <laughs> and I have to go out of town um, and then all my plants die. So I'm trying not to get over ambitious, um, but all of this to say, I've been thinking I'd like to try planting some bulbs because I didn't really realize that you could do bulbs in containers. Um, Cause obviously I'm like, right now I live on the second floor. I don't have any um, actual yard space. I just have the balcony. And I'm moving to a third floor with actually two balconies, um, which is going to be fun. Um, and one of them is pretty big. It's bigger than this one and quite private. And there's a tree. And anyways, I'm rambling. I was like, I don't have that much to talk about, but of course I'm just going to ramble. So I don't know how to, yeah nice color, my favorite butter yellow color. I just wonder about the usefulness of a slipover in this color, but I think I like the color so much that I would make it work. So now I've done 22 minutes on daffodils. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really nice and I just like to hold it. So maybe I'll, I shouldn't I have other things. I mean, it would be nice to do something just stocking it soon. But I keep talking. I've talked every episode about how I'm going to do the everyday pullover, daily pullover. I can never remember. By Paula Pereira that my mom is knitting, that we are ostensibly doing as a knit along. But um, because of COVID and stuff, I haven't. We haven't been able to get together really this entire winter, so um, I haven't had the like push to start that. But I think that'll be my next. Yeah, I really would like a stock in it thing because I'm all I've got here is color work, um, which does bring me to my next things. Next work, work in progress, which I've talked about in every video, um, is the Marit Cardigan by Kristen Drisdale. I won't say too much about it, but, um, I got two sleeves <laughs> and actually all, all I've really got here is sleeves. I've just got these two sleeves and, um, uh, my great gam pullover, which I had talked about last video. I have two sleeves, so I've got a stack of sleeves. Um, you can see this, this one is blocked and this one is not. And this one looks a little, the, the, <laughs> the unblocked one looks a little shorter, but I'm fairly certain it will block out to the same length because I think I did a fair bit of like um, tugging length weight. I mean, not tugging, but like I kind of coaxed it to be longer because when I blocked this one because it's not anywhere near the measurement it's supposed to be. Um, even though I've done, I have measured and I have the right gauge. Um, I was looking at other Ravelry 
pages um, and seeing that a lot of people didn't, like their sleeve didn't uh, get to the right length even with the correct amount of repeats. So whatever, um, that's why these are on hold kind of. <laughs> this is just on a, a cable and this one's um, on <laughs> a spare needle. Um, because I'm going to do the body and then decide uh, what to do with with the length of the sleeve and how I want to attach it, um, which I talked a little bit about in the last episode. So, but I should say the body is going to take forever. So I feel like there's decisions to be made, but um, I won't have to make them for a really long time. Um, because as I've mentioned, I'm making the smallest, I'm uh, the smallest size, but I'm making the largest size. So it's not a hugely size inclusive pattern, which I didn't um, really register um, because I'm kind of used to being the largest size <laughs> in things. Like I feel like my whole life <laughs> have been just the biggest, um, you know, in all the stores I was shopping in and whatever, but, um, which is not great because I've not, like, there are lots of people out there larger than me who probably would like to make a nice colorwork sweater. Um, so yeah, I'm making the largest size, so there's a lot of, a lot of stitches. So this is the body. I finally finished the ribbing. It's just not that much to look at. Um, have I finished the first? No, I haven't even finished the first little part of the chart. I guess in my mind, this is the first section of the chart, like, like to here, and then that's the second section. <laughs> but that's not, I mean, yeah. <laughs> nah. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. It's going to take forever. Oh, I'm losing a stitch. And I also, <laughs> I don't know, this needle's a bit big. Um, I don't know why I bought this length of needle. It could be like a few inches shorter and it would be more, I think it would be a little bit like of a better flow to knit with, but um, <laughs> I, uh, Every time I do this, I think I should tidy up behind me so it looks a little nicer. And I thought this was out of view. Um, <laughs> it does kind of look like B. I was going through, just because I'm, I'm packing, and mm, this was in a box with a bunch of knitted things that had moths in it, and my friend helped me save everything the other day. I'm having like big bug trauma problems with this moth situation, but um, all of my yarn and all of my knitted things are safe and taken care of. Um, but now I'm finding them in other places, which is sad, but this is my um, <laughs> Emily the Strange doll that I bought as like a preteen. I really loved Emily the Strange, uh, and I've kept it ever since. And I can't remember what the cat's name is, but Anyways, I thought I put it out of frame, but then I noticed it was just lying down here. Um, <laughs> she does look like bee. So I'll leave her there. Okay. Um, anyhow. Yeah, you're seeing sort of the... This is what the inside of my brain is like. Ooh, I have so much packing to do. Um... I was talking about the Merit, though, wasn't I? Do I have anything else to say? I don't think so. I, w I feel like this is kind of getting boring, showing you this, these tiny little bits of progress every time, but I don't know. I guess finishing the sleeve was not nothing. Um, I don't think I had much of the sleeve last time. Or I had a chunk of it. Anyways, so that's that.
And that's all in Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight except for the little orange rows, um, which are Rama Fino PT2, I think. And yeah, as you can probably tell if you've seen the Marit, I, I've talked about this before, um, it's usually a three color pattern and I have made it five, so altered it quite a bit. I really still love it and I'm excited to wear it and I'm hoping it fits. I still have fears about whether it will actually like be a good size on me, but we'll see. Um, so the next thing, my other sleeves, I finished two sleeves. I've got two sleeves for the Greek Gingham Pullover by Jessie May. Um, yeah, of course I'm putting them on. <laughs> so they're going to be pretty like big voluminous sleeves and these also like yeah got some <laughs> what am I trying to do here um yeah they blocked out a little longer than they uh, knitted up and <laughs> this is not a great way to display anything um but I'm making this great gingham raglan out of the red is Peace Fleece Sport slash DK. I think it, the pattern calls for sport weight. Um, so this is a bit of a heavier, um, heavier yarn. And then the uh, cream color or the like variegated color, which again is like way more interesting in person. You can kind of see it. I don't know, it doesn't look as nice on the camera. Um, that yarn is, uh, Le Pastel Club, which is a yarn dyer in Montreal. They're neon, um, which is a fingering weight, like heavy, it's a little thick and thin, heavy fingering. Um, it's hundred percent Dorset wool from, uh, from Canada. The color is called Fusfen. Here's the nice skin. Yeah, you can kind of see the colors a lot better in the skein. On camera, you get like a better idea of how, how like, yeah, how many different colors there are. And you can see that in person, but it just, the like red on camera kind of washes it out, but, or I don't know, like just overpowers it, I think. But in person, like I can see like pops of yellow and pink and anyways it's more interesting in person um but yeah what a nice skein I have to I took this out because I have to cake it up because I'm almost I mean I'm not that close to being done the first skein but um I'm on to my second skein of the peace fleece and still on my first of the um, pastel club so again the ball doesn't look well, you can kind of see how interesting it is so this is what I have of the body Oops, sorry I hope that didn't I'm just always trying not to hit the mic so yeah I've got two I'm on on to my third repeat of the chart um, and again I wish this cable was slightly shorter but it just looks a bit chaotic right now but yeah you get the idea um, and I think for my size I'm supposed to do five repeats of the chart until I join the sleeves and that seems short to me but it is supposed to be cropped and I think Yeah, I think it'll work. I don't know. I'll see when I get to five how I feel about it. If I want to do one more, maybe. I'm just trying to think, like, how I wear things. I like the idea of wearing... I think a really cropped sweater works great over a dress. 
like what I have going on here. But then when it comes to wearing it with jeans or pants, I don't always love that as much. Like I, lately I've been really liking a longer sweater that I can like just tuck the front in um, to my pants. Because I don't also like necessarily having to wear a shirt under. I wear most. I don't think I have any knits that I wouldn't wear next to skin. Um, I'm not. It's not that I'm not sensitive. I think I just like because I like wool so much. I just like the prickle. Like it doesn't bug me. Oh my god! I'm just pulling all my stitches off. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just thinking about how long I want this to be, but I feel like cropped is the way to go with this. Um, like, fun and loud of a sweater. So, anyways, it's hard to show. I've <laughs> Both the sweaters I'm working on are bottom up with the sleeves done and a little, a little band of the body. I mean, I guess this is a pretty significant band of the body, but I also wanted to show you my stitch marker. Where is it? I talked about these last time, but they're my favorite little stitch markers from Firefly Notes, um, and it's a strawberry. I just think it's cute with the gang. <laughs> silly, silly things. Um, yeah, you can see my floats are quite loose, um, which is what's making it look pretty messy, but um, once it's blocked, I think they'll sit pretty flat. And yeah, now that I think I talked last time about being worried about the long floats, because there are some um, rows where you carry the other yarn like seven stitches, but now that it's blocked, like, and I'm wearing rings and stuff, and I put my hand in the sleeve, like it's not catching at all. Um, <laughs> testing. <laughs> uh, there's no catching, so that's good. Um, and yeah, they're pretty like, um, toothy, toothy yarns, pretty sticky. So I think they just stick to each other and that's fine. And I think it would have been really fun to have this finished for spring, but, um, that's okay. It's whatever. Maybe there'll be like a cool summer day on which I can wear this. I mean, I don't, I don't mind knitting wool sweaters in the, in the summer. Um, I'm just like, we'll be excited to wear it and then we'll be able to and it'll be sad, but that's okay. Um, the, the socks have been getting a lot of my attention, but now that there's like more progress on the body, um, I feel a little bit more excited about it. And this is obviously knitting up a bit faster than than the red um would so i feel a little more like drawn to it because it seems less daunting um i kind of want to just make a pile of all my sleeves where are the rest of my sleeves um <laughs> oh gosh so many needles and cables anyways here's my stack of sleeves <laughs> it's like it's it feels like so much knitting but then nothing to wear you know <laughs> all my sleeves um I don't think I've ever done a bottom-up uh sweater before so now I'm doing two I'm really making up for it now um and I did a toe-up sock so and that was new to me um I do think that I prefer toe up, actually, and might do that going forward, um, mostly, I guess, depending on the pattern. But yeah, that, I think that's all that I wanted to talk about. How many minutes? I still managed to ramble for 40 minutes. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, I've had a few people ask. Um, if I have like a Ravelry or a, an Instagram, um, and 
I do have, like, I have Instagram, but I don't, I don't post anymore. I'm, I'm trying to stop using it at all because it makes me feel bad. <laughs> it's just like, it feels gross there now, unfortunately. It used to be like a nice, a nice thing and now not so much. But, um, so I don't, I don't post my knits anywhere on Instagram. I do have, obviously I have Ravelry, um, and I just kind of use it to save patterns and uh, to keep track of how long things took me. Um, but I recognize that maybe it might be nice to have a place with like more details um, about my patterns. It just feels a bit overwhelming to like, I think I've talked about this before, I just hate photographing things and I don't know why um it just like really makes me tired to think about it <laughs> um but yeah so maybe that's something that could be helpful that I should um be a little more focused on is making I know Ravelry isn't accessible to everyone um so if you know of a, a better place that I could put um info about my projects maybe yeah, let me know. I just really have been trying to get away from a lot of, maybe mainly just from Instagram. I'm trying to like, I just haven't felt like, I mean, I guess what it comes down to is that, should I talk about this? I guess I will. Um, I've mentioned in the past that my dad passed away in 2020. Um, and so <laughs> one of my last Instagram posts, uh, my dad was an alcoholic um, and he went into multiple organ failure and we needed to find um, a liver donor for him. So my last Instagram post I ever made was <laughs> like, yeah, asking if anybody would like to donate their liver to my dad. Um, because for like a variety of reasons, I wasn't able to, I wanted to, wow, we're just getting into it. Um, I wanted to, but, uh, my BMI was too high, um, which is like really sad and disappointing thing. I was, they, I was classed like as a surgical risk and so they would not, um, even try to take out part of my liver to give to my dad. Um, and that was really disappointing and also disappointing to realize that we live in a world where um, <laughs> they were like, well, none of you can do it. You should ask people on social media. Um, and that was like the solution that was presented to us. Um, so ever since then, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's bad to talk about this or anything. It's just funny that it comes from being like, I don't know where to uh, write down information about the things that I've knitted because I don't, uh, I feel like I plateaued on social media. It's like the most, uh, I don't know, like what, how, how do you follow up that? <laughs> saying would anybody like to give me part of one of their organs um it's just yeah so I I since then have been not that into posting um which you know that was one of the really lovely things about that really hard time was that so many people offered to donate their their liver to my dad um and unfortunately it just didn't um his like condition worsen worsened too fast and um yeah so even if I had been eligible it might not have worked out so that is something that I try and remind myself um I wonder if I'm gonna cut this out <laughs> uh yeah it's been a year and a half now um and I think it's uh important stuff to talk about um yeah, because it's, you know, one of the ways that the pandemic 
has, I think, affected people that is not talked about, like people who are really isolated um, for one reason or another. Um, yeah, and you know, my dad probably would have gotten sick in that way eventually, um, but it just happened really fast because of the pandemic, so yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's enough on that. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. All that from the my little note that says social media. Um, yeah. So. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about, which is hard to, again, it's hard to follow that up. Um, I just wanted to mention some other podcasts that I like and that I feel like more people should be watching. Um, and I've been meaning to mention... Uh, the shy knitter, uh, Amy, um, for the past couple of episodes, but I get so like, <laughs> I don't know. I just get, I have so many thoughts and I don't always make notes and I just keep forgetting and I feel bad because I really like, uh, Amy's podcast, the shy knitter, also a Montreal knitter. Um, and, uh, I really like it actually because she doesn't show her face. Um, and it's just like from the shoulders down. Um, and it's just still really lovely. At first I was like, um, cause I think I found her cause she commented on one of my videos. Um, I mentioned she was from Montreal. So I watched her videos and I was like, will I enjoy watching this if I can't, um, see somebody's face? And it, it totally is still really lovely and, um, a nice, I'm surprised more people aren't doing it. Um, so she's, she's got two episodes I just checked earlier, um, and hopefully more on the way, um, cause it's really nice and I'm happy to have like, uh, sort of met her <laughs> through YouTube and we've just talked a little bit back and forth in the comments, but, um, we went to Knit City on the same day, but not at the same time. And Amy mentioned I wouldn't be able to recognize her anyways because I haven't seen her face. But uh, yeah, so The Shy Knitter is the first one. And the second one, I don't remember how I came across this podcast, um, but uh, it's called Tiny Needles Knits. Um, and the uh, podcaster's name is Jessica Faith Cooper. And I'll link both of them in the description. Um, and Jessica is based in Edinburgh, um, which I, I love Edinburgh, and I'm really wanting to go back. I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, my grandpa was from Leith. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, that doesn't have a ton of bearing on why I like the podcast. Um, I just liked uh, Jessica and what she's working on, and I feel like more people should be watching her. So. Those are two, I think, that you could check out. And I, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to share more, um, like, recommendations. I don't, yeah, I'm like, I don't have that many um, subscribers anyways that I, and I'm not going to, like, I don't know. A lot of the ones I watch have a lot more subscribers than me. So I was like, anytime I find someone who has, um, who I think needs more people watching them, I would like to uh, shout them out. So, yeah, Ooh. I feel like this was a rambly one. I hope it wasn't, I mean, yeah, I'm not like apologizing for talking about personal things. Uh, I think it's important to talk about and I hope you didn't mind. I mean, <laughs> I if you did mind, uh, that's too bad because it's probably, I don't know if, like talking about my dad is something that will come up that often, but, um, uh, I don't know. I feel like I've talked a little bit about mental health stuff and it's just relevant, I think, to knitting for a lot of people. Um, talking about how we exist in the world and <laughs> it's definitely like been a huge way of coping for me and that's why in the last month I've knit like three sleeves and a, a sock because I'm just desperately trying to not <laughs> lose my mind. Um, 
I mean, whatever, it's like already lost, but uh, just trying to get by in a really hard time. And I think that um, the pandemic in a lot of ways feels like over or like we should be over it and like moving on. But I think it's, I think the ways in which it is affecting us um, probably won't be totally clear for a long time. And sorry, not to be a downer, but I just, I feel like people underestimate how it's affecting them. Um, and definitely the reliance that I have on knitting and, you know, like buying wool, <laughs> um, which I'm hoping. I feel like I shouldn't say I'm not going to buy wool because then I like cave and I buy too much wool, but, um, or yarn, but most of what I knit with is wool. Um, I'm going to try not to until the fall. Let's say that. I'm just remembering that there's something coming in the mail. <laughs> Anyways, what am I saying? Doesn't matter. Um, I'm just, if you watched this, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, oh, I think that, you know, things are hard. And if you can find some time to do something that you really like, <laughs> uh, that will probably be helpful to you. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope this wasn't too much of a mess. I hope... I don't think I have too much editing to do, but we'll see. I hope I didn't forget to say anything. Probably be back in a month or so. Which seems far off, but... Um, and who knows how much time I'll have to knit. It seems I'm having trouble <laughs> wrapping this up, but okay, thank you. Um, talk to you soon. They're fine, don't they? Like, <laughs>